Christmas early. I'm glad that uh, we're glad that you're here tonight. I uh, was reading uh, something out of the Common Book of Prayer that uh, or the Book of Common Prayer that I wanted to read to you tonight. I, I, as we get closer and closer to Christmas, I don't know if you ever feel this, but just feel the pressure of of Christmas and all of the things that need to be done for Christmas. Um, I don't know if you if you guys stress about um, giving or getting. Um, gifts, but um, Christmas sometimes is filled with craziness, and in 2020, I think it might actually be a little bit more crazy. Um, so it, it's good to remind ourselves um, of the reason of Christmas, and, and even characters like Santa Claus, I think it's good to have a little bit of clarity sometimes on uh, the history behind that. So that's what I want to read to you um, tonight out of the, common, uh, the Book of Common Prayer. It just says this, the original old Saint Nick who inspired the tradition of Santa Claus Nicholas was the bishop of Myra in the fourth century Turkey. Little is known about his life except that he entrusted himself to Jesus at an early age, and when his parents died, gave all of their possessions to the poor. While serving as bishop, Nicholas learned of three girls who were going to be sold into slavery by their father. Moved to use the church's wealth to ransom the lives of these little ones, he tossed three bags of gold through the family's window. Today we recall this ancient Christmas gift as it reminds all believers that we too have been rans ransomed by the person of Jesus. So Alana is going to read uh, from Matthew chapter 1 about how Jesus was born and him being the ransom for you and for me. Yeah, so in Matthew 1 verses 18 through 21 it says, this is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her fiance, was a good man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save the people from their sins. Worship together with us tonight.
Give life. Here, 
your voice to sing that bridge out one last time. Sound beautiful tonight. Read this first part of this liturgy if you would read the second. Whenever you call, wherever you lead, and whatever the cost, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ beside me. Amen. You guys can have a seat. Thanks, buddy. Well, I'll say, Bless the Lord if you'll say, Oh, my soul, bless the Lord. Bless his holy name. Hi, Kairos. I'm Chris. I'm the pastor here. Thanks for being here tonight. Um, I want to say a big thank you to Bogsy uh, last week for leading. Sure do appreciate you, buddy. Um, I got to have some time off with my family, um, and Bogs was good enough to lead the whole service through worship and through some of his original songs and through some of his stories. And I'll say really nice things about him while he walks around. As soon as he comes back in, I'll be done. Um, Boggs is a, a really trusted friend, um, an incredible minister and pastor. Uh, he's husband to Keeley and father to Nash. Um, and just being alongside of him makes me a better minister. I burst into his office. I don't care what he's doing, laying down tracks, singing, putting vocals, whatever worship pastors do during the day. And I'm like, I gotta talk to you about this. And with just a brilliance and a creativity, he helps me craft um, statements and say things better more memorable and more poetic. And so I'm really, really honored um, to be able to serve alongside of him. He's been here for 15 years, um, and he's helped build the ethos of this place. And so Sunday night when he got to lead, and I was spending more time with my family, um, my family got sick of me, so I left. Uh, and I snuck in the back door and got to sit up there and just, this is a special place. Um, and that's not about me, it's about him and the culture that he's created. So I'm uh, I'm really grateful uh, for Michael Boggs. I'm also really grateful for Advent. Um, it's Christmas. It's December 2020. It's almost over. Um, uh, if you're like me, it wasn't until about like 10 or 12 years ago that I learned what the word Advent meant. Um, uh, somebody introduced it to me. It's on the church calendar. It's a Latin word that simply means the coming. And so it's the way that we celebrate uh, Christmas from a Christian perspective. Um, it kind of partners with our forefathers and foremothers as this historical, ancient longing and yearning for the coming of the Messiah to rescue and redeem us. And so from our perspective, Advent has two meanings. It cuts both ways. We remember the coming of the Christ child, but we're also yearning and longing and looking forward to Christ's return, his second coming. Um, and this year, uh, I've never been more happy to see Christmas in my entire life. Um, I just, for some reason, Christmas lights help me feel better. I've said this before, and I, I can probably get fired for it, but I will vote for any politician, regardless of affiliation or beliefs. If they repeal daylight savings time, I'll blindly <laughs> vote for them. It is the worst, especially in our time zone. When it's dark at 4.30, I go Donnie Darko. Like, you're just, you're shut down. My wife and I have consistently looked at each other and started laughing because it feels like 11.30 at night, and it's 7.30. And so we're still trying to catch up. I struggle with seasonal depression, and so I like get right up next to them Christmas lights, and I'm like just trying to let them ooze into my body. And it's like, Jesus, please come again soon, or at least do something about the sunshine. 
But Christmas uh, also allows me to tell some of my favorite stories, um, one of which I think will get us in our uh, text tonight. I promise it's going somewhere. Uh, there's a story told about a little boy who lived about a block and a half from a Methodist church, and he was at his house, and it was Christmas time, and he knew enough about St. Nick. He was going to decide he was going to go straight to the source. And so he sat down at his desk in his room, and he took out a sheet of paper, and he took out a number two pencil, and he wrote, Dear Jesus, this year I have been a good boy. So for Christmas, I would like the following. A pair of Air Jordan 1's retro, a Tamaguchi pet, a Furby, a Tickle Me Elmo, PlayStation 4, whatever your, your, your gift is. He's writing it all down. A blowtorch. Um, <laughs> And he's just thinking about, wow, my, God gives good gifts through his son, Jesus Christ. So he's just going down the list, and all of a sudden, he looks back up at the top sheet of his paper, and he reads the word again this year, and he's like, ooh. He remembers something he did about six months ago. They got in trouble, and so he crosses out this year and writes six months on the top of it. He continues with his list. You know, I want a Red Ryder BB gun. I want this. I want that. And he looks back up at six months, and he's like, ooh. He remembers something he did to his sister, so he crossed out six months, and he puts uh, one month, and he's like, yeah, that's good. He goes on with his list, and then he remembers what he did last week. So finally, he's just frustrated because this is not working out. He crinkles up the paper, throws it in the wastebasket, stands up, goes out of his room, grabs his winter jacket, slams the front door, goes crunching through the snow down to the local Methodist church, in which in front of it is this huge lifelike nativity scene, the statues of Mary and Joseph and the wise men. Um, and the shepherds, and he walks straight up to Mary, looks around, grabs Mary, and runs straight back to his house. Get in his room, slams the door, opens up his closet, chunks Mary in there, puts a bunch of dirty clothes over top of her, closes the closet, takes out a new sheet of paper, and writes, Dear Jesus, if you ever want to see your mother alive again, <laughs> I demand the following. A trampoline, you know, Whatever. Uh, I just love that story. It's so delightful in so many ways. And unfortunately, a lot of times, I think it describes how, how I relate to God. Uh, I, I try to tell him, hey, I, I've been a good boy, and so I think I deserve certain things. But when I start to think about my life and you start to think about yours, the truth of the matter is we really don't want what's fair and what's coming to us. We want love because love's stronger than fair. And so tonight, we're going to see how God interrupts a little girl's life in the middle of trying to plan her wedding and her holiday, and the favor of God is going to find her. If you have your Bibles, let's turn with me together to Luke chapter 1. We'll be in Luke chapter 1, and we'll start reading in verse 26. I'll pray for you guys, and for me as well, uh, as we turn there. Holy Spirit, would you give us eyes to see and ears to hear? Jesus, would you go before us in this text and make a way? And together we say, speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. Amen. Luke chapter 1, and we'll start in verse 26. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great. He will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. 
Listen to her response. I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. I'll say the word of the Lord if you'll say thanks be to God. The word of the Lord. I think this is like going to be on my top 10 favorite passages of all time. What a delightful story. And it all starts by the favor of God finding Mary. Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Now, think about that for a second. What's so favorable about Mary? If she's a teenage girl, she's living in this backwater town, and for most archaeological and uh, scholarship information, at least I have available to me, is she was poor, probably plain, meek, and mediocre, living a small and seemingly insignificant life. When all of a sudden, the angel of the Lord, Gabriel himself, shows up, and God's favor finds her. Poor and plain, meek and mediocre, small and leaving a seemingly insignificant life. And yet, for some reason, God chooses her. I love what Robert Tannehill says about this. He said, it's probably God chooses her for the extraordinary because she is so ordinary. Mary is a young girl in a society that only values men in maturity. And yet God's favor finds her. It's my prayer tonight that God's favor will find us. Right here, right now. I don't know what you're walking through. I don't know if you're bored right now or you've been betrayed. God's favor can find you. I don't know if you're feeling lonely or really, really lovely. <laughs> God's favor can find you. I don't know if you're underemployed, unemployed, or overemployed because your job's laid off everybody else and now you have 10 jobs. God's favor can find you. I don't care if you're sick or if you're healthy. God's favor can find you. In life and in death, God's favor can find you. How can I say that? Because the favor of God comes with the presence of Jesus, and his name is Emmanuel, God with us. The favor of the Lord, as unfair as you may think it is, found Mary. And what was her response? It might be yours too. The text says, she said, hot dog Jesus lottery, here we go. The Catholics are going to love me one day. I'm an equal opportunity offender. Just, just sit around long enough, I'll get to your denomination. I know I'm denominational. That is a denomination. You're welcome. No, what does the text say? She was deeply troubled and wonder what kind of greeting this might be. Why in the world is Mary, plain and poor, meek and mediocre, small and living a seemingly insignificant life, all of a sudden deeply troubled at the favor of God finding her. I, I would say maybe this. Maybe Mary's spirit knew what her brain couldn't yet process, that she knew this would be costly. She knew that the privilege of service comes with profound sacrifice. She knew, as Ashley Cook Clare says, that Mary's honor is yoked with a burden and that it would cost her. The favor of God has found her and it would mean that in her hometown she would bear the judgmental and condemning looks and whispers behind her back that she has a high school pregnancy out of wedlock. And then it would mean that her and her young husband would spend time on the run as religious and political refugees trying to elude a genocidal dictator to save her son who came to save the world. It would also mean that one day she would look up and see her son's body beaten and broken and hanging on a cross executed like a common criminal. Also, that the unfair favor of God could find us. Yeah. Quite simply, men and women, 
favor, it ain't fair. But it's love, and love's stronger than fair. Now, favor ain't fair. If you've been around me long enough, you know that's a phrase I love to use. Once again, thank you, Michael Boggs. He introduced it to me. He was at some sketchy event where some prosperity preacher was using it and talking about, sorry, I got a personal plane, but favor ain't fair, y'all. I thought that was the greatest thing I'd ever heard. I started using it. Like, anytime I get a parking space that's, like, close to TJ Maxx, just kidding, I don't shop there. I do. Uh, I'm like, sorry, suckers, favor ain't fair. Now I got good parking. I'm about to get... Name brand clothes at a huge discount. All the money I'm saving my wife this holiday season is unbelievable, right? It's when you're sitting down with a group of friends, you've ordered your meal, it comes to you first, and everyone's starving, and they can smell yours, and they want to eat your French fries, and you're like, favor ain't fair. God loves me. I'm his favorite. Pour on the blessings I will receive. I'm trying to get my kids to start doing it like on Christmas morning when they get a good gift, like, favor ain't fair, sorry, I'm mom and dad's favorite. (laughs) Side note, that's one of my wife's favorite things to do at the dinner table, uh, tell one of our kids they're they're favorites. Um, Normally, Maggie loves it, Simon goes, you say that to everybody, and usually somehow it ends in a fight, and we have a great seven-minute meal. (laughs) But favor ain't fair. And just like Advent, that cuts both ways. It ain't fair that God's favor finds us. We didn't deserve it. We can't repay it. But it also means that favor ain't fair. It's going to cost you. God's got some things in store for you that are going to require a profound sacrifice. Favor ain't fair. Just ask the men and women in the Bible who have followed after God. Ask Abraham. Who God's favor found, and he said, I want to bless you so you can bless everybody. Sweet, sign me up. And then he's walking his son to the altar, supposedly to sacrifice him. Ask David. Favor ain't fair. Finds him in the shepherd's field, the least of all of his brothers. Anointed king. Then he has to run for his life from the man who won't get off the throne. Favor ain't fair. Ask Ruth. After her husband dies, She moves to a foreign country, and she has to go out in fields and glean from them, pick up the leftovers that the harvesters didn't get, all so that she and her mother-in-law don't starve to death. Favor ain't fair. She becomes part of Jesus' family tree. Ask John the Baptist. That's Elizabeth, who's in her sixth month. He kind of leaps in the tomb when he gets next to Jesus. Jesus called him the greatest in the kingdom of God. His job was to prepare the way. He did it, and he did it amazingly. And then he winds up on death row for a sermon that he preached. And he sends word to his cousin Jesus. Are you the one? Or should we look for somebody else? <whistles> Favor? It ain't fair. And then Jesus is going to go through an unfair trial, have an unfair execution, also that he could offer us the deliciously unfair salvation of God for the freedom and forgiveness of our sins. Favor, it ain't fair, but it's love, and love's stronger than fair. Mary, of course, has an objection, right? She's like, how can this be? Well, but one person said, Mary's asking the how, and Gabriel's telling her the who. You ever keep talking about the how? And God wants to point you to the who. And by the way, when God calls you, if you don't say how, question mark, chances are it wasn't God, it was your own ambitions and dreams. You should go, yeah, there's no way I could ever do that. Why would you use me in that way? Ah, but nothing's impossible with God. And then somebody said this, and I love it, and it's seared into my brain. Mary quiets her questions long enough for her faith and her obedience to bear the weight. Hmm. I know you got a lot of questions about how it's all going to turn out. I know you got a lot of questions about your family, your relationships, your finances, and your future. I do too. But maybe tonight, he's Emmanuel, God with us. And maybe we could quiet our questions long enough 
so that our faith and our obedience can bear the weight. Amen? I have Boggs and Elena and Max come up. They're going to continue to lead us in song, but before they do, or while they do, are you okay if I share this text with you out of the Jesus Storybook Bible, my preferred translation? It's delightful. If you're looking for any last-minute Christmas gifts, you can buy yourself one. Wait, God was sending a baby to rescue the world? But it's too wonderful, Mary said, and felt her heart beating. How can it be true? Is anything too wonderful for God, Gabriel asked. So watch this. This is the way that Sally Lloyd-Jones translates. I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. So Mary trusted God more than what her eyes could see. And she believed. Mary trusted God more than what her eyes could see. And she believed. So we're just going to take a couple of minutes for you to quiet your soul and have a conversation with God. Dismiss distraction all the things that you could be or should be doing right now and just be fully present. First question I have for you is why don't you go ahead and tell your father what feels so unfair in your life right now? That's okay. He already knows. He just wants to hear you say it. you want to mutter under your breath that's not fair what makes you want to point a finger into the sky and say why God why your questions to be quiet just long enough so that your faith and your obedience can bear the weight. May you remember that the unfair favor of God has found you. He's never going to leave you or forsake you. He sees. He knows. And he's writing a story beyond your wildest expectations and inviting you to play a part. Even right now, even if you feel poor and plain, meek and mediocre, leading a small and seemingly insignificant life, the Lord is with you. if you're able to whether it's authentic or an act of faith would you just whisper to God I am your servant may it be to me according to your word
feel free to respond however you need to respond in this moment. If that's singing, I want to invite you to sing. If that's praying, I want to invite you to pray. Just however you need to respond in this moment, just invite you to do that. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me all my days. I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God Cause all my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire in darkest night you were close like no other i've known you as a father i've known you as a friend and i have lived in the goodness of god it's all my life it's all my One more time. Cause all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. And every breath that I am able, oh, I will 
sing of the goodness of God. I will sing, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God.
comfortable, would you put your hands out in a posture of receiving? I'd love to speak a prayer of blessing over us. May the unfair favor of God find us. And when his favor finds us, let's remember that every privilege of service comes with a profound sacrifice. And may this week, would we quiet our questions long enough to find that our faith and our obedience can bear the weight and the waiting for Jesus to come again and make all things new. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. We'll sing the doxology in just a second, but just want to say thanks for being here. What a sweet time of worship with you guys. I pray that you've been encouraged and you've had a gospel reminder that Jesus loves you and Jesus saves. If you need anything from us, just text the word Kairos to 623-623. If you need connected, need pastoral care, whatever it is, we want to be here for you. If giving is an act of obedience and worship for you, you can give on the way out at our giving stations or text the word give um, to Kairos uh, to 623-623. You get it. Text the word give to that number that's behind me, hopefully. Also, uh, Miss Beverly's here on our prayer team right across the hall. If you just need someone to pray over you and pray for you and with you, we'd love to do that as well. Um, yeah, thank you. Sing this with me, Kairos. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. peace to love and serve the Lord. We'll see you next week.